SSL is becoming cheaper and easier all the time, but from time to time there's still some problems with SSL. There's opportunities for man in the middle attacks, woman in the middle attacks too. Uh, but fortunately there is a way to mitigate some of those attacks using HTTPS strict transport security. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another fun-filled episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode I'm gonna talk a little bit about a little-known HTTP header called Strict Transport Security. Uh, so let, let's start off I suppose by talking about SSL. Um, so SSL was introduced years ago in like Netscape Navigator Gold. Um, and it's used to encrypt traffic between websites, I guess. Um, so it it's is a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. I was only like 50 years old at that point in time. <laughs> so. Old man Simon. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, right, so it's um, SSL is a, a transport level encryption protocol. Um, so it will encrypt all of your HTTP traffic. Uh, so this is always something that I see some questions about, like, hey, if I put parameters in my get strings and like the URL, is that gonna be encrypted by SSL? The answer is yes, your parameters are safe. You can put whatever you want there. Please don't put passwords there anyway. Um, so that's all nice and secure and we call it SSL even though it hasn't really been SSL for a number of years uh, well if you're super insecure it is but uh, we've moved on to TLS which is a more modern and better implementation of SSL that doesn't use like MD5 hashes anymore hopefully anyway so when you go to a website, uh, there is this like key exchange protocol that takes place when you're over SSL that will move um, keys back and forth. So SSL works with like um, an asymmetric encryption algorithm, so like a public key algorithm initially, uh, but it uses this to exchange actually like a, a symmetric encryption key because those are a little bit faster to use and can be more secure. So that that like initial talk, it really just sets up the, the SSL exchange so that we can have a symmetric encryption key. But there is still this window of opportunity, like if somebody comes to your website, if I say, hey, go to aspnetmonsters.com, most people are gonna type in aspnetmonsters.com and hit enter, and that is gonna take them to an insecure version of the web page. Like it's not gonna be protected by SSL initially. Uh, now I can have on my web page a redirect which takes users directly from the HTTP version to the SSL version. Uh, but this still presents a slight window of opportunity for somebody to break into the site. Because SSL doesn't just provide uh, encryption, it provides, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here, um, perhaps authority. Uh, it, provide, it proves that I am who I say I am. So if you ever look at an SSL certificate, you'll see that it is for a specific domain and that it's been signed for that domain. Uh, so it, it is possible that somebody could perhaps intercept the plain HTTP request and redirect somebody to a fake domain. Uh, and there would be, people might not notice that, especially if the, the domain names were similar. So there is a slight window of opportunity there for person in the middle attacks. I'll be a little bit more gender neutral <laughs> now we've done the introduction. Uh, but HSTS can help a little bit with that. So what HSTS is, is it's a header which is added to your HTTP request, which basically says, hey, anytime you visit aspnetmonsters.com, you should just go straight to the SSL version. Uh, so after the initial visit that somebody goes there, uh, all requests in future should go to the SSL endpoint by default. So that saves on a redirect on my part, which adds a little bit of time to the request and it makes people's experience a little bit more secure. So there is 
we, we've narrowed the window of opportunity here from every time that they type in ASP.monsters.com to just the first time that they ever do it. Uh, so I have uh, added here inside, this is a standard ASP.NET Core application here, and I have added a handy dandy piece of middleware here. Um, so I added an extension method here for use HSTS. Uh, this is an overly simplistic implementation of this, but we'll, we'll get into that. So this is going to call into the HSTS middleware here. Uh, I, of course, lock stuff out because logging is fabulous and you will never regret putting in logging. Unless I guess you have performance problems, but who has those? <laughs> Not me. Yeah. Uh, no. And basically, I'm just going to add a header to the response that goes out here inside this middleware. So the, the header is called strict transport security, and I'm setting a max age on this. So this is like the length of time during which subsequent requests should just ignore the HTTP endpoint and should go straight to HTTPS. I, I have this set to 120, so that's two minutes. Uh, this is way, way too short. I just have it like this for, for demonstration purposes. You're much more likely to want some value like this one here that I won't even attempt to enumerate 31,536,000. Uh, so this is the number of seconds in a year. So this will guarantee your site security for a year. Uh, it's very important that you include the subdomains here. So if you have subdomains off of your main domain, this will include all of those domains too in this. Uh, so that prevents people from kind of camping on a subdomain or something like that and providing a, an attack vector that way. Cool. Uh, you can also include this preload here. So I haven't, I haven't done that up here and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's go try this thing out. So I, I have this set up to just run uh, when we're not in the development environment here. So I have helpfully deployed this out to the Azure here. So we have monsters HSTS at Azure websites.net. Uh, so this is my initial visit to the site and I have not done a manual redirect of people to the HTTPS endpoint. So I'm still able to get to everything on here using just plain HTTP. There's no encryption here. Your connection to the site is not private. Uh, but in addition to that, use just yes, uh, middleware, I would probably have one that redirected people to the HTTPS endpoint. So let's let's go and do that. So I'll just add HTTPS, colon slash slash in here. So this is going to take me to the handy dandy secure version of this site. Uh, so now you can see there is a green padlock here. My connection is private to the site. And if I go down here and I pull up one of these files here, I can see that there is a strict transport security header that has been included. Uh, now let's try going back to the HTTP version of the website. So keep in mind that I do not have any redirects. Like we saw that there were no redirects in the application yep. taking you back to the HTTPS endpoint. So let's just hit this here and I'm straight back at the HTTPS endpoint. Mm. So that's actually done by my browser because it knows, hey, there's an HSTS or the uh, header on this site. I should always go to the SSL endpoint. Uh, so that that's fabulous in my mind right there that it's going to stop people from ending up on the insecure version of the website for a period of cool. 120 seconds. Okay, so I mentioned the preload header. Uh, so if you happen to have preload on your website, then you can head over here to hstspreload.fspot.com and this is a list of domains that is actually added to Chrome and uh, Firefox and IE11 Edge uh, all feed off of this list as well of websites that have HTTPS headers on them by default. So uh, I wasn't able to add monsters HS at Azure web sites net because I have a few problems with it. Uh, I didn't add the preload directive. My max age is too low, so it's going to be at least 18 weeks. We were going to set it to a year. Uh, and I'm missing that HTTP redirect to HTTPS. Uh, I'm also sending HSCS headers over HTTP, which is unnecessary. Doesn't The, the headers don't have any effect unless you're on the, the SSO mm -hmm. page anyway. But had I satisfied all of these conditions, then 
this domain would have been added to this list in the various browsers. And now instead of going to the HTTP endpoint, like on the initial visit that people would do to the website and giving that a really narrow opportunity for somebody to do a man in the middle attack, person in the middle attack, uh, <laughs> robot in the middle attack too, maybe lots of people too. Uh, so it eliminates that, that really narrow window that people, that uh, attackers had. So initially you're going to go to the SSL version of the website completely 100% of the time uh, so that that's awesome yeah i think it's a really cool feature it certainly makes ssl a little bit more secure eliminates this little window of opportunity it doesn't seem like a big thing i guess that uh, the the possibilities of these attacks are fairly small and you'd have to be quick to execute them but like, you can see how easy this was to implement like it's basically going to be two pieces of middleware uh, and plugging a domain in here. And that's, cool. that's pretty much it for HSTS. And you had to do this as a as some custom middleware because that's not something that's built in then to the framework. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it might be built in. I don't think it is built in. Uh, there is a NuGet package which supports it. Mm. Um, I happen to stumble across this fabulous blog here. Uh, that Andrew Locke put together talking about oh, excellent. Uh, not just strict transport security, but some other additional headers too. Yep. And he mentions in the comments down here at the bottom uh, that he has put together a NuGet package. Oh, for it excellent. There. So I haven't tried using this, but uh, I think it's probably a pretty good there you go. to have. Cool. So uh, I will link to this in the show notes. Excellent. Well, thanks everyone for joining us again here on the ASP.NET Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, and send us an email with your comments and questions, just like these folks. So this was on episode 63, Model Binding in ASP.NET Core, and we had Jal Booker. I'm not even sure how to say that, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> not a clue, but... He's asking, hi, thanks for sharing. What is that tool? I could not understand the name. Thanks. So that was in reference to the Postman tool that James was using to send requests and and test out his model binding in this app, test application. So that's Postman. I think it's at getpostman.com. Yeah, getpostman.com slash apps. You can download it from there. Look at you replying to comments. <laughs> So thank you very much for your question, and uh, reach out to us on Twitter. We'll send you one of our handy-dandy magic turbo buttons, uh, ASP.NET Monsters stickers. Mm, of which I don't have any around me to show <laughs> Either. I was looking but they're for fabulous. Oh, wait, uh, I do have one. Right here. One of those. Ooh, look at that. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.